Hey guys, I'm really sorry about no video last week. I went on holiday on Friday and the week leading up to that had been so hectic with work and friends and family stuff that I had no time to pre-film a video even though I was planning to so unfortunately no video last week. But to make up for it I've got a couple of actually planned videos coming up. So. Let's kick off the first of those with the mid-year book freakout tag. I haven't been tagged by anyone and I'm not going to tag anyone. I just thought it would be a fun thing to do. <coughs> Got my trusty notebook here to help me. So, let's get started. First question is favourite book so far this year and that is actually Fearless by Tim Lott. This could go to so many things but favourite just kind of sums it up. It's, I mean, this is a beautiful book. It was originally a cover by I got because this place near me does um, two paperbacks for 50 pence. So I wanted to get a second one and this looked, the spine looked nice. So I just said, yeah, I'll take that. This is now one of my favourite books of all time. I was expecting literally nothing from it. It doesn't even sound that interesting. I have to say, I'm not particularly attached to any of the characters in this book but the writing and the story it's phenomenal it's just for the first half of the book I just kept thinking this is this is a lot like 1984 like it reminded me a lot of that style of writing of George Orwell in general it's felt rather Orwellian but it's for kids technically technically this is a children's book it's very odd to compare a children's book to anything written by George Orwell, but there you go. It It is, and it's phenomenal, and I can't even describe it because I love this book so much. Favourite book <laughs> so far this year. <laughs> yep. The best sequel so far this year is actually A Course of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas. This is the third book in a trilogy, and the f obviously then the final book. And I know sequel is usually the second book. I haven't really... I've read three, and I enjoyed them all, but they weren't that great. So, Akawar. I did like A Court of Mist and Fury better than I liked A Court of Wings and Ruin. Especially with having just read through A Court of Thorns and Roses and A Court of Mist and Fury right before. Also, it took me a week to read the first hundred pages and then I read the rest of this book in a day and this book is chunky because I was read buddy reading with my friend who is really slow. Yeah. So, that's fun. She finally finished it, which is why I marathoned it. <laughs> yeah, it's a good book. The ending is a little unsatisfying, but it's not the worst book I've ever read. And it's the best sequel I've read so far this year. Yeah. Four stars. Yeah, it was it was good. The third book is the third question is actually a new book that you haven't read yet. I don't have any new books I haven't read yet because I've only got three releases from this year and I've read all of them because I was excited. Also, I think I read at least one of the other two while I was putting off this one. So, I don't have any new releases I haven't read yet. I don't think I even have any of last year's releases I haven't read yet. I just have some really old books that I'm trying to convince myself to read. <laughs> So the next question after that is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And it's actually coming up pretty soon because mine is Wonder Woman Warbringer by Lee Bardugo, which comes out in August. I've never read any of Lee Bardugo's works, but from what I've heard, she's an incredible author. I want to read her other books, but I also love Wonder Woman. Like, she was my favourite when I was little. I used to watch the cartoons and whenever I could find a comic book I would read it. My mum doesn't approve of comic books. My mum doesn't approve of a lot of things. So, it won't come as a surprise to anyone who's met my mum. 
but she didn't approve of comic books, so I haven't really read that many comic books, because it's really hard to find them when your mum kind of controls everything you buy. So, yeah. One Woman Warbringer. The next question is the biggest disappointment so far this year. I no longer own the biggest disappointment I have so far th this year, and there were actually two books, and I'm going to do a shout out to one, which was Model Behaviour by Geraldine Ryan, which I also do I don't own either of these two books. This is not the biggest disappointment I've had so far this year because I wasn't expecting much of it, and it turned out to be even worse than I expected. I wanted to destroy it rather than pass it on because it promotes some stuff I don't agree with, but what can you do? But the book that's actually my most disappointing read of the year so far is Handbags and Homicide by Judith Stacey. As I said, also don't own this book anymore. Let's see if I can get pictures up. I'm gonna try that. <sighs> Talk speaking of trying to get pictures up there, if you have any recommendations for photo editing software, please, please, I'm still using Windows Movie Maker and it's not good. No. But anyway, Handbags and Homicide. I was in a murdery mood. As a reader, that's not that weird a thing to say. I wanted to read about a good murder. I just read books by Tess Gritson and Michael Connolly. I wanted a slightly fluffier murder with not quite such intense, gritty drama. So I picked up Handbags and Homicide because that's what it looked to be. Except the main character, and I, I, I've had this book book for years, and I wanted to read it, and I was so looking forward to it. I finally got round to it, and it was so disappointing. It's, the twists aren't that interesting. The writing is mediocre, and it's not that. It's not a terrible book. It's just I wanted a good book, and I just read two great books, and this was such a disappointment can't even describe why it was a disappointment. I just... Mostly I just hated the main character. <laughs> I'm not a fan of ditzes in literature. Not when they're the main character. Not when they're every character. It's just... Oh, on a more positive note. Book. Next one after that is the biggest surprise of the year so far, which is Summer of the Bear by Bella Pollen, which I really should know, because I've talked about this book quite a while, quite a lot, because I read this book a while ago, I actually had another book down, and then I was going through Goodreads and remembered this. This is a book my mum gave me. My mum does this thing where she buys books cheaply from the place that does two for 50 pence, and then returns them. It's a charity shop, so you can just buy books and return them. And sometimes she gives me books if she thinks I'd particularly enjoy them. That's what happened with this, and it sat on my shelf for a couple of years, and the description isn't that interesting. I tried picking it up before, and it was really boring, so I just wasn't expecting anything of this year. At one point, this was down for my favourite book of the year when I finally remembered it. <laughs> but, no. Fearless is my favourite book of the year so far, and this is just the biggest surprise. This is... I love this book. It was great. It's about this family. The dad was attached to the British Embassy in Bonn in the in 1979 and he died and then his family moves to the Outer Hebrides for complicated reasons that are explained in this book. And there's a bear loose on the island. I promise you it's so much better than it sounds. It's not even so much better than I'm making it sounds. This is literally, like, try and see if that will focus. That's the description. It sounds so boring, 
Well, it doesn't sound so boring, but it doesn't sound the most captivating, and then it's brilliant, and the writing is phenomenal, and I just ended up loving this book, and it was a big surprise. <laughs> so, biggest surprise of the year. So far. So far. Speaking of how Fearless was almost my biggest surprise of the year, the next up is favourite new author, whether that's a debut author or new to you, and that is Tim Lott. The writing in this book is absolutely phenomenal and I want to find all of his books and read them. I think there are quite a few so this will be a project, but this was a really quick read for me when I actually sat down and read it. The print's quite large, there are it's not a picture book necessarily, but before each um, chapter, I find one, they had like a little picture and then this little thing and that takes up quite a lot of space and the font's large and it has a map. But in fact, it has a couple of maps. Actually, no, it just has the one map. It's the map of the school that it's focused around. School. <laughs> That's not a spoiler, it says so on the description, which is in here. Because it's a paperback, but it's it's a funky paperback. The back is just a quote from Jacqueline Wilson, which might inspire some of you to read. It didn't inspire me because I don't like Jacqueline Wilson. The writing is beautiful and amazing and exactly the sort of thing I want to read more of. So I will be reading more of his stuff as soon as I can find it. And he's a British author, so even better. The next one is another one I can't answer. It's newest fictional crush. I don't tend to get crushes on fictional characters. I only remember ever having a crush on one fictional character and that was a, from a TV show a few years ago. As you know two, there was one from books when I was a lot younger. By younger I mean like 10. I didn't really know what a crush was. So, anyway, moving along. My newest favourite character is Moriarty <laughs> from Moriarty by Anthony Horowitz. I like Moriarty from BBC Sherlock. I have only read one of the Conan Doyle books with Moriarty and I don't remember which one. It was a few years ago and I did not record it. Yeah. I wasn't great at reading classics. Sorry. <laughs> So, I wasn't a massive fan. I like Moriarty from BBC Sherlock. I haven't liked him in the other ones I've read. I've read Baker Street Boys, he's in that. Not so good. And I've read... He wasn't in Young Sherlock. Not a massive fan of him in Arthur Conan Doyle. But in this, in this I truly loved him. Like, it's not even love to hate him or hate to love him. I just love to love him. He was... Oh, just read this book. I can't say anything about why I love him because spoilers. Spoilers. God. But it's so good. This book is so good. It's Anthony Horowitz, so of course the writing is awesome. I'm biased. But... <laughs> it's a very good book. Next book is an is um, well, this is technically the next two because it's book that made you cry, and then book that made you happy. This made me sob. I don't cry much. One of my friends, who I read with sometimes, has gotten really annoyed at me because apparently I'm emotionless and a robot. <laughs> I find her pain amusing. Um, <laughs> she knows this. I've made her cry on purpose. That sounds worse than it is. Um, <laughs> this book made me sob uncontrollably because of something that happens, but it also made me happy, and that's Forever Geek by Holly Smale, the sixth and final book in the Geek Girl series. I've read all of the books in this series. I've loved all of them. This is not the best book in the series. Ah. This is not the best book in the series, but it made me laugh and it made me cry and it's the ending the series needed, which makes me incredibly happy, but I'm also incredibly sad, both because it's the end of the series and because of something that happens in this book and now I'm, 
<laughs> Sorry. Whew. <laughs> this book made me sob. It also made me immensely happy. It's so cute and perfect and it's... I need to put this down before I start crying again. Next thing is favourite video I've made so far this year. And that has to go to my books and cushions video featuring all these wonderful things I'm surrounded by. This is my favourite because it's incredibly soft. Anyway, my books and cushions video because I put a lot of effort into it and it came out pretty well, I think. It just makes me happy. I even have a proper thumbnail for it, which never happens because I'm lazy. <laughs> the penultimate question on this tag is the most beautiful book you bought or received so far this year. So far this year I've bought two books and received one and you've seen two of them already. That doesn't matter because the most beautiful hasn't been up there yet. And that's Mind Games by Terry Terry. That is her name. It's a good book, but also silver. Look, this it's black. This is all shiny and silver, and it's as though the black's been overlaid on the silver, and then the black, it's like the back and the side are entirely. Look at how shiny that is. And then there's also the fact that she signed it, because I got this at an author signing at my school, and she signed it in blue, which makes me very happy. Yes, that is my name, not Cecily. Those of you who don't know, I'm actually called Sam, not Cecily. This is a good book. Four stars. Not the best thing I've ever read. Not the worst. Very inventive and good. And I'm trying to think of how to describe this book. Oh. Sorry, I got a light, which is why my lighting is weird and it's making my eyes go funny. I'll just... We do this back bit here because it's kind of hard to not shine. Uh, Luna has a secret. She is different, but no one must find out. Because in this world you must play their game or it could cost you your life. Will Luna discover her true identity in time to save the ones she loves? This is a, about virtual reality, sort of. It's very complicated. It, but once you read the book it makes perfect sense because it's not actually that complicated it's just very difficult to explain yeah excellent job Sam moving on final question is books you need to get to this year I have an entire little stack for this if I can oh it's heavy there aren't that many books in this it's just the ones that are in this are oh, big big books oh well that is not working there we go okay on its nest down. So we will start with the trilogy on top, which many of you have probably heard of, and that is the Millennium Trilogy by Stieg Larsson, which is uh, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, The Girl Who Played with Fire, and The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest. Obviously my covers don't match because this third one is a slightly different cover than these two, which is also why the font on the side is different. If you can see that. I don't know. So those have been on my shelf for a while, need to get to those. Oh, I also need to read Alan Turing, The Enigma by Andrew Hodges. I should know who this is by. This book has been staring at me for a long time. I've actually read the first third of it and then I gave up. So, we will attempt a reread of this. This is why I gave up. It's massive and I was busy. I was busy doing A-levels, -le so I never finished the book. Need to before the end of the year. Preferably before the end of the summer. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you've definitely seen me talk about this book. Sherlock Holmes. The Complete Illustrated Short Stories by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This is all 56 short stories that were printed in the Strand magazine. They were printed in, complete with illustrations. It's obviously a chunky book, there are full page illustrations, but the font is tiny and there are no breaks in writing. 
So I've been reading this for a few months. I am about 200 pages in, which is just over a fifth of the way through. I need to finish this before the end of the year. Preferably before the end of summer, because I don't really want to take this to uni with me. In contrast, I do need to finish this next book before I go to uni, but it will be coming with me anyway. And that is Biochemistry, 4th edition from the Bios Instant Notes series. This one written by David Hames and Nigel Hooper. Because I want to study biochemistry at university, hopefully starting in September. I'll be living on campus, but I feel like this book would be a useful thing to read before I got there, and probably a useful thing to take with me. So yeah, need to read this probably multiple times and then take it with me. And that is the mid-year book freakout tag. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to do it, feel like doing it, or feel like doing it yourself, go ahead. You are sort of tagged. Blue. Hope you have a great week and a great reading week and goodbye.